on what Mze would have wanted. And uh, today when we are picking him up from the morgue, I'm glad your direction for merging the military and our wishes have been respected. Mze lying over here, the casket he's lying in, uh, is a very simple mbao ambayo taijapigwa randa is very rough. I've just been told it actually costed 6,800 shillings. I mambo mingi ya casket ati mutu mkubwa 500,000, 1 million. His essence and spirit is no longer with us. This is a body which he served the country with and now it is finished. Yeah, in addition to that, let me just briefly address the rumors I've been seeing on social media asking, is this guy, was he Muslim, the rights he wants to be buried with, what's happening? Your Excellency, as you know, Jesus himself, how he was buried, he was wrapped in a sheet and put in a tomb. Right now, Mze is wearing the uniform he donned for number one functions, but tomorrow we'll be wrapping him in the sheets, we'll extract him from the casket and lay him in the ground so that he can return to us dust as quickly as possible, just the way he wanted it, and just following the man he admired the most, Jesus Christ. Your Excellency, my father always alikwana mambo matatu kama wewe, not the same, but all these speeches were divided into three. Today I divided it into four because he was a foster general. Firstly, you heard from Bishop Lele about his love for God. Uh, somewhere in that helicopter wreck is his Bible, which was his most precious possession. Anyone who worked with him in DHQ, MAB, LAB, wherever, can attest that he always had a Bible with him. And I am hoping they are able to retrieve it from the accident. I want to keep it as a memento and for the rest of the family as well. His Bible meant a lot to him. And between me and him, the rest of the family, my mom and my wife were a bit slow. But we'd always engage in a competition for reading the Bible and discuss the mortality and all these things of life. He understood that his position was temporary and it would always end. Leading up to his death, he almost knew that his time was up. Despite having very many plans for the military and, and for his family. But he spoke in a certain tone that would suggest that, my son, uh, I won't always be here and you will need to take care of my wife and my other children, which I am more than ready to do, and it will not be a problem. And Matthew, Matthew 5, 3, Beatitudes of Jesus, it says that blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He was the poorest man in spirit. Easy chaskas mingi, office kupwa, watu kumuita CDF, general sir, uh, to him it was all vanity. It was a necessary thing for him to be able to fulfill his job. Nothing more. As he lays here uh, with his uniform, I see they put his medals, his sword and boots. He loved it as a tool for the job, but nothing more. Don't be under any illusion that he thinks is important once he breathed his last. That was point number one, his love for God. It's point number two and point number three is a very blurry line. It is about his soldiers and his family. I can guarantee you right now, Ule private Mwenyameka, Pale Jukwa Kona, and me, he viewed us almost the same. You may not have had the same privileges I might have had being his son, but in his heart of hearts, the lowest person the cleaner to his vice he treated all of them with respect and he respected every single human life his worst days was when he had uh, or rather different days he hears his soldiers have been hit he was actually mourning like he was mourning a, a child 
and he'd go down to his knees and ask God, what is happening here? Had for me strength. Naitaji kulima hii alta bawa kabisa. Naitaji kulima hii bandits kabisa. Which is what he was doing in the line of duty when he went down. And I want to tell even the bandits or al-Shabaab who are celebrating. Mutu mwenye alikuwa na lima lima kilo wakati. Muongeze click. Watu ya SF, mukipewa mission, ya kuenda kulima adui, maliza kabisa. Na ukifanya skamishing, confirm. Muongeze tatu za kichwa. That's how he would have wanted it. He wanted to die, in fact, fighting one of these enemies. And so, musikubali kwa gopa al-Shabaab. Kama mdo siwenyu hakuwa na gopa adui, basi muna gopa nini? Siyea, melala hapa. Na sisi wote tuto lala hapa. Usipende maisha yako yote, sana. Na hiko kitu moja kubwa kushinda yo, mwenyezi mungu na inchi yetu ya Kenya. Lima hu al-Shabaab. Lima hu, musiangushe klik. Muongeze, muongeze, muongeze. Watu ya boni, endele ni kuongeza klik kabisa. Because... His ultimate dream was to have a fully peaceful Kenya. He mambo ya watu kugongo, gongo, hitting civilians left, right and center. He had told me many times, General Karangi started that or that side, I will finish it. He may not be done to finish it, but all of you now have a responsibility. Musi angusha yo click, weke ni tu. And he always used to say, kazana, weka, kazi mbele na mungu mbele na ulime adui kabisa lima adui atakufanyia nini utakuja hapa we'll celebrate you but Kenyans will remain safe those tears of the women in Baringo and their children and the people who are displaced they won't go in vain hata sasa wenye wako deploy duko wenye walichukua mili zao kwa ndege don't despair boy kazi inaendelea he's gone amri bado iko since ya metuwa amri, yyo mali lazima ifageliwe kabisa. Na hivyo ndi itakua. That was point number two and three. I'll talk about his family briefly. He really loved his wife. And he loved us also as a family. And he did everything for us. Anything he was ready to sacrifice for us, he believed in us completely. And... His wife, I know, he kept on telling me, Unajua ni kienda sasa wendo utachunga mama. And mom, I will take that job seriously, na nitakuchunga to the best of my ability. Lastly, if you knew General, he loved reading. He loved playing golf. I know his golf buddies really miss him. And he said in an interview, when Excellency appointed him, was the last time he played and just when we were talking on Saturday, I told him, Sasa uki retire, itakuwa haji. And he told me, I look forward to going back to golf. But his primary consideration always was this great nation of Kenya. He loved it and in his death, he wishes that Kenya will remain totally secure, free from external influence and any Kenyan, be it from Baringo, Chemolingot, Lamu, Mandera, Wajia, any corner of this country, he wanted them to be safe. A child to go to school, get an education, pursue their dreams, and he died doing that. And there is no greater death for him. He loved, besides his golf reading, I believe we as a family genuinely believe General had more than 24 hours in a day. Because in a day, Tuesdays and Fridays, in fact, we are normally here. This Tuesday we were here doing the uh, Defense Forces physical readiness test. He said, if I'm the General, I have to show that this test is possible. And ironically, he did, I think, the most press-ups of everyone here. Not the most press-ups, but the most push-ups. We did push-ups, he did 80 of them at his age, over 60. He did press-ups, I think about 50, and he ran 3.2 kilometers in about 19 minutes, which is absolutely phenomenal for his age. So, Pia Nyinyi, Mukukoju, 
watu ya vitambi fuateni wenende ya general si unaona umetosha kwa sanduku vizuri au jafinya finya toshe vizuri and so last as i finish the most important lesson should should you disregard his love for god and what god can do to you in your life and the battles he can help you win should you disregard everything i can tell you something ukiwa na mkono gamu hautaipata baraka even when god wants to give you money and resources you need to open your hands you need to empty your pockets patiana general livio sia umulize yo sa umevapo nipatie anakupatia general limekuwa mapa nisaidie he will give you he was so generous and as a result of that as a family we have never lacked i am to just try test your faith test your faith start mwenye nakombanga pesa hata umechoka na yeye aje give him forget about it najua hapa he told me the amount of debt ordered to him and i enjoyed him if you ever die eh? kwa mazishi yako nitaenda nianze kuchukua hizo madeni yangu ndio at least nijenge mambo haya nyumba mahali but akasema hapana hiyo ni sadaka nimepatia Mungu uh, and so generosity Gen just test your faith hiyo wacheni kushikilia vitu kwa mfuko fungua mkono god will bless you we will miss him he was a great great simple man and we love him and to the entire KDF fraternity poleni sana we stand with you and especially for the people who perished with him we in fact were running with that whole group here on tuesday and tuesdays and friday were his days if i can ask kwa makambi zenu chukweni hiyo fitness serious mkwe muna kimbia kimbia so that at least you can take the physique and also better your own health asante sana and god bless all of you uh, thank you very much uh, joel for such a rich tribute to your dad, General Francis Omondi Ogola. Your Excellency, it is now my singular honor and pleasure duty to invite the ACDF PNL to read the biography and thereafter invite the VCDF. ACDF, sir. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces, sir. Permit me to ride on established protocols. I have the honor and singular duty to read the biography of the late General Francis Omondi Ogola. My name is Major General David Keteri, the Assistant Chief of Defense Forces in charge of personnel and logistics. The late General Ogola was my mentor and I was directly answerable to him on personnel and logistic matters. General Francis Omondi Ogola was born on 12th February 1962 in Siaya County. He was enlisted into the Kenya Defense Forces as an officer cadet on 2nd May 1984 and commissioned as a second lieutenant on that May 1985, upon which he was posted to Moy Air Base, where he trained as a pilot. During his career in the Kenya Defense Forces, General Ogola held several command, staff, and instructional appointments. In command, he was appointed the commanding officer like Ibia Air Base, tactical flight wing in 2007, and also the base commander like Ibia Air Base from the year 2008 to 2014. Upon promotion to Brigadier on 10 April 2012, he was appointed the Deputy Air Force commander and later on promoted to a major general on 13 July 2018 and appointed a con commander Kenya Air Force. On 23rd July 2021, he was also promoted to the rank of a lieutenant and appointed a vice 
Chief of Defense Forces, a position he held till 28 April 2023 when he was promoted to the rank of a general and appointed the Chief of Defense Forces. From my interaction with the late General Ogola, I can attest that he had a welfare of the Kenyan Defense Forces at heart. He ensured that he frequently visited troops in both deep and close operation areas and promptly addressed challenges in the field. He encouraged members of Kenya Defense Forces to keep fit, and this he led by example, by ensuring he attended by weekly sporting activities at this complex facility. His last group physical activity was the annual Defense Forces Physical Readiness Test, which was conducted this week on Tuesday, 16 April 2024, on this very ground. Being the Chief of Defense Forces, he did not have to attend the exercise due to his extremely busy schedule, but he chose to lead from the front by participating in the exercise, just like the rest of KDA personnel, in sync with his command philosophy, one force, one mission. Due to his dedication to service, the late General Francis Omondi Okola was awarded several medals, among them Elder of the Order of the Golden Heart, Elder of the Panning Spear, Head of State Commendation, among other, others. The cruel hand of death has robbed his family of a loved one. Kenya Defense Forces, the country has lost a patriotic and hard-working general officer. He will be missed by his family, relatives, colleagues, friends, and nation at large. I wish to express my deep condolences to his wife, Madam Eileen Kadambi Ogola, his children, Lona Acheng Omondi and Joel Rabuku Omondi Ogola, his daughter-in-law, Mudoni Njenga Maura, his grandson, Master Tajim Bagara, his friends, family, relatives, and colleagues. May the Almighty God rest his soul in eternal peace and grant abundant comfort to members of his family. Your Excellency, sir, it is my humble duty and honor to kindly invite the Vice Chief of Defense Forces to give his remarks. VCDF, sir. Uh, Madam Eileen Ogola and the family of the late General, our CDF, Francis Omondi Ogola, Your Excellency the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, High Excellency First Lady, Mama Rachel Ruto, your Excellency uh, Deputy President, Honorable Rigaji de Gashagua, and Mama Dorcas Gashagua. Your Excellency the Prime Cabinet Secretary, Amsali um, Amudavadi, Speakers of the National Assembly and Senate, the Chief Justice and President of the Supreme Court, Honorable uh, right Honorable former Prime Minister, Raila Odinga, Cabinet Secretaries and Principal Secretaries present, and all senior government officials invited, Governor of Nairobi County, uh, Service Commanders, Honorable Members of the House Committee on Defense, Intelligence and Foreign Relations, members of the Diplomatic Corps, the KDF fraternity, our families, distinguished ladies, distinguished gents, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is with great sorrow and great sense of loss that uh, we have gathered uh, at this uh, stadium, which was very dear to our departed uh, CDF. Uh, 